So I had a package from Clever Training on my doorstep when I came over from work today. What could it be? Let's take a look. Oh, what could it be? Ta-da! It is the Favaro Asiomer power meter. And I've got the, where does it say it here? The duo model. Now first I want to say I've trained with power for years, though even though my last year or so probably doesn't look like it. Uh, first I started way back several years ago with a Kirk Kinetic rock and roll and I was using Trainer Road with uh, their virtual power. Uh, then I got a kicker, kicker chain game changer, used that with Trainer Road for a couple seasons, then Zwift came out, and been Zwifting on it, uh, but that's indoors, outdoors, still didn't have anything, I was waiting for the right power meter price point to happen, and it's happened, but the, my biggest hesitation with these is I have to change cleats, I'm using Shimano SPD SLs right now, and these use the Kio, uh, look Kio look-alikes I guess uh, um, so we'll have to do a, a little uh, cleat changing on the shoes but uh, I think it'll be all right uh, I'll learn to live with it I'll get over it but let's unbox these and see what's in this box of goodness so here's the box and I think this just slides out somehow Oop. flip this puppy open oh and there they are. Look at that. Isn't that beauteous? Put those to the side for a second. Uh, we've got some manuals. Who needs manuals, right? The, my, the, uh, the, the cleats of my angst. We'll see how they work. These are actually Xpedo cleats. I believe these pedals actually, the, the pedals that are being used on, on the Favros here are the, uh, the actually the, it's the Xpedo N, NLS or NSL bodies. Um, and obviously the power meter is put on the end there. The washers for, for spacing against the crank arm. I really like manufacturers who give you the tool that you need to install them. Uh, though doing all my own bike mechanics, I have my own eight millimeter uh, wrench, but it's this is a nice inclusion. This this will sit in, in one of my toolboxes. And then of course, let's take all this out. All the plug and doohickeys, depending what country you're in. I'm in the USA, so we'll find that one. These are the little magnet charging mounts. I'm not going to go too much into all this. Like I said, you can look at. Shane Miller's, GP Llamas, and DC Rainmaker's reviews, and they go into uh, the mechanics of this much better, but I, I'm more curious about, we're gonna, uh, I won't show the installation, because that'll be boring, because you've seen that a thousand times. We will uh, get them on the bike, uh, I'll do my own meter test, and I'm gonna show you how I'm going to switch from SPD SLs to, look, and there's the charging block that these little guys plug into to charge up the power meters. Okay, here we're going to do the oblig obligatory weighing of the pedals. I think everyone does this. This is just to confirm that they are some of the lightest pedals on the market, power meter pedals. Uh, pardon the lighting in my dining room here. You can see the overhead lights. Sorry, I can't change it. But here we go. One pedal. Ooh, it's 152 grams. Second pedal. 152 grams. Both together. 304. These are actually, I don't know, two grams heavier than most other people's. Oh well. My Shimano pedals. These are Ultegra 6800s. 130. 129. I'm just going to weigh both of them right now. 259. So basically, for roughly 40 some odd more grams, I have a two sided power meter. 
Awesome. Okay, so here we have my current red shoes with the SPD SL cleats. These are the new Xpedo look compatible cleats. Now, first thing is a lot of people say this is a much smaller footprint than this. When you hold them over to one another, uh, yeah, not really. There's really very little difference. There's a little bit more tongue up front here. They're a little wider to walk on with these little rubber bumpers, but uh, as far as pedal contact surface, yeah, you're kind of splitting hairs there. I don't think it's going to be a big deal. Now, the easiest way of going from one to the other, I think, to do this is I'm going to mark. I have the center marks. I don't know if you can see that on camera. These cleats have center marks. So I'm going to mark the center marks on each side and draw a line across. I'm going to mark the center of the cleat back here and here and draw a line up and down. And then I'm going to line this cleat up with those marks. Now the center marks on these, I believe, are these little casting lines right here. They're not as pronounced as uh, the Shimano's. Uh, but that might show up on camera actually. So right there. So that shouldn't be too bad. So with that said and done, I'm not going to bore you with me unscrewing and screwing stuff in. Make sure when you take these off and you put the new ones on, you use lube. All right, so I've been kicked out of the dining room because my wife wanted to make dinner. Like we have to eat right now. Anyways, cleats are on. You can see I made the marks. Well, you can't probably can't really see the made marks, but I put tape around. I didn't really have to draw a line across because these cleats really are just as wide as the Shimano ones. I just left the tape on here for effect. Uh, oddly enough, though, they don't have as much adjustment as the Shimano ones, so I couldn't even line up the center marks on these cleats with where my old center marks were, so they're back by, like, uh, a millimeter or so. Uh, I'm not really concerned about that, assuming that is the center line. If someone else knows where the real center line is on these cleats, let me know, um, but probably by the time you see this video, I've already figured that out and made adjustments to them. Um, they look like they'll be just fine. Uh, once I get them on the bike, I'll know exactly if something's amiss or not. So, anyways, there they are. So now I'm in my pain cave, also known as my bedroom. Uh, got my bike right there. I'm going to put the Asiomas on. I'm going to activate them, get the app on my phone, light them up, and then we're going to go for a spin. Alright, so I got the pedals on my bike. They're calibrated, I set the crank length, we're good to go. I've paired them up via Ant Plus to my Garmin. I've got the kicker going to Zwift. I got Zwift running, got my Garmin running. I'm going to spare you the, the trouble of uh, trying to show you all that because mm, I don't have really a setup in here to do that. With that said, I'm going to do a little Zwift ride here. Uh, I might do a, a structured workout to compare. Right now I'm going to do a free ride and then uh, we'll do that comparison and maybe like a, a short structure workout. Uh, I don't have a ton of time tonight to ride for a couple hours. We have to be up early in the morning. We're doing a charity walk. Uh, well, I can't be a charity bike ride. I don't know. But anyways, I digress. Uh, so I'll be back in a few. All right. So we're back here at day two. So I analyzed the data from last night's ride. Uh, a couple interesting things is when I first started, I did about a half hour ride and I broke it up in 10 minute chunks. When I first started, I had calibrated the Asioma pedals, but not the kicker. There was like a 10 watt difference between those. So then I calibrated the kicker and I brought it back down to about five watt differences, close, but not quite. And so I'm poking around trying to understand why and I realized I didn't set the crank length on the Garmin uh, head unit. Uh, I had set it in the Asioma app to my 170 millimeter cranks, but I didn't set it in the head unit, which overrides what you set in the app. Uh, once I set that back to 170 and recalibrated, uh, there was a half a watt difference between the Asiomas and the uh, kicker overall. Uh, for average so uh, you know and, and they tracked perfectly with one of they always tracked perfectly with one another It's just that there was a wattage difference and I finally figured that out so uh, a couple things to remember there have been on here for about a week done a lot of indoor riding much outdoor riding 
Pardon me if I'm a little out of breath. I just finished climbing a 14% grade. I didn't even know it was there. Um, anyways, back to the pedals. They performed admirably well, except for last night. I forgot to charge it. One of them came partially charged. Uh, it was giving me a little battery. I want to see how long it would last. They say about eight hours. Pretty much right on. Charged them up last night and they're both working perfect again. Uh, oh, I come to the end of the road here. Hold on. As I was saying, so far these pedals, I give it two thumbs up, but I'm only showing one because the other hand's holding the camera. <laughs> uh, don't worry, I'm on this little side road here just tooling around after that climb. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe.